The Coagulation Cascade The integrity of the vessel wall and the endothelial cells that lie therein is monitored by circulating platelets. When injury to the vessel wall occurs, endothelial damage results in the exposure of subendothelial collagen fibers. This subsequently leads to a response from platelets, which adhere at the site of injury, are activated, and aggregate to form a primary hemostatic plug. The integrity of this seal relies on fibrin mesh formation, termed secondary hemostasis, to stabilize the plug. Fibrin formation is the result of the coagulation cascade, a series of enzymatic reactions that result in the production of covalently cross-linked fibrin. The cascade involves many different proteins. There are zymogens, or inactive precursors, of serine proteases, factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, factor 10, factor 11, and factor 12. Serine proteases are enzymes with the amino acid serine in their active site that hydrolyze specific peptide bonds. There are cofactors, tissue factor, factor 8, and factor 5. And there is a transglutaminase, cymogen, factor 13. A transglutaminase is an enzyme that forms peptide bonds between the side chains of glutamine and lysine amino acid residues. Finally, there is fibrinogen. Note that an activated coagulation factor is indicated by the suffix A. The activation of the serine protease zymogens occurs on negatively charged phospholipid membrane surfaces, represented here by the horizontal bars, of activated platelets, monocytes, and endothelial cells. Coagulation proceeds by the formation of three enzyme complexes. The tissue factor complex, tissue factor and factor 7A, the tenase complex, factor 8A and factor 9A, and the prothrombinase complex, factor 5A and factor 10A. Each of these complexes involve a serine protease, factor 7A, factor 9A, and factor 10A, a membrane-bound cofactor, tissue factor, factor 8A, and factor 5A, and calcium. The coagulation cascade has three sequential overlapping phases. Initiation, amplification, and propagation. The coagulation process is set in motion by vessel wall injury. Blood comes into contact with cells that express tissue factor on their surfaces. Historically referred to as the extrinsic pathway because of the extravascular location of tissue factor, this pathway is the primary initiator of coagulation in vivo. Tissue factor binds both small amounts of circulating factor 7A and factor 7 zymogen, promoting its autoactivation to factor 7A. In the presence of calcium, this forms the factor 7A tissue factor complex, or TFC. The tissue factor complex activates small amounts of factor 10 and factor 9. Factor 10A forms a complex with factor 5A and calcium, the prothrombinase complex, to convert small amounts of factor 2, prothrombin, to factor 2A, thrombin. This small amount of thrombin formed during initiation of coagulation activates platelets, exposing a negatively charged membrane surface and stimulating the release of factor 5 from alpha granules. Details are shown in figure 26-6. This small amount of thrombin also activates factor 11, factor 8, and factor 5. On the activated platelet surface, factor 9A, some formed during the initiation phase and some formed by platelet-bound factor 11A during the amplification phase, binds to factor 8A and calcium to form the tenase complex. The tenase complex, as its name suggests, converts factor 10 to factor 10A. Factor 10A associates with factor 5A and calcium in the prothrombinase complex, resulting in a burst of thrombin generation. The thrombin formed during the propagation phase of coagulation is of sufficient concentration to promote fibrin clot formation. 
thrombin cleaves fibrinopeptides A and B from fibrinogen to form a soluble fibrin monomer. Fibrin monomers polymerize spontaneously to form an insoluble fibrin mesh. Thrombin also converts factor 13 to factor 13A, the transglutaminase that stabilizes the fragile clot by covalently cross-linking fibrin, making the fibrin polymer resistant to lysis. The contact factors play a minor role in initiating coagulation in vivo. However, they are important in the initiation of the coagulation cascade in vitro, as measured by the activated partial thromboplastin time, or APTT. This system is often referred to as the intrinsic pathway. Surface contact activates factor 12 to factor 12A in the presence of precalocrine, abbreviated as PK, and high molecular weight kininogen, abbreviated as HMWK. Factor 12A converts precalocrine to calocrine, and factor 11 to factor 11A. Calocrine feeds back to activate additional factor 12 and cleaves high molecular weight kininogen to release bradykinin. In vivo, the activation of factor 11 is not dependent on the contact proteins, and thus deficiencies of factor 12, precalocrine, or high molecular weight kininogen are not associated with abnormal bleeding. Overall, the coagulation cascade is a series of overlapping and complementary pathways that drive the formation of cross-linked fibrin to stabilize the platelet plug. In summary, when there is injury to a vessel wall, activation of platelets, primary hemostasis, and the coagulation cascade, secondary hemostasis, occur simultaneously. Platelets are captured by subendothelial proteins and ultimately aggregate to form a platelet plug. During this process, they are activated to provide a procoagulant surface on which coagulation protein complexes are formed, resulting in thrombin generation. Fibrin formation is the final step of the coagulation cascade and provides a cross-linked mesh structure which is resistant to lysis. The fibrin binds to and stabilizes the platelet plug, leading to the cessation of bleeding.